So, by using the evergreen Microsoft Excel, we created the RAID log, the essential tool for managing project events. Now, let's see what other shapes this document can take. In real life, we often see many variations of this document. Simple actions log, actions and issues log, risk actions, issues and dependencies log, a standalone risk log, etc. There isn't any confirmed best option for this document in the project management community, besides that the document must exist in each project in some shape. So we will provide you with our practical recommendations coming from our own project management experience. Option with one single table. As described in the previous lessons, it is quite convenient to have everything in one file, even in one table. On the other hand, the different nature of the events, risks, actions, etc. may require different columns. For example, we already know that whenever managing risks, we need to add severity and probability of occurrence. We can add those two columns in our RAID table, but you need to agree this table will become too heavy. And there will be no contents in these two columns for the other types of events. This will make the table harder to read and reduce its practicality. In real life, too complex structures lead to less frequent use of the document. One alternative is to put the different event types in separate tables in different Excel sheets in the same file. One sheet for actions, one for issues, one for risks, dependencies and decisions. In this way, you can customize each table to the specific case and be really efficient as you will customize your management per each type of event. The drawback of this option is the project manager's attention. When the going gets tough, you will need to remember to go through each sheet on a regular basis. In real life, the project manager may start forgetting to check all of the sheets regularly and get used to working with only two or three max. Yes, it doesn't sound nice, but after all, project managers are humans too. Between A and B, we believe B will be the better option. It will be cleaner. But is it possible to have option C with something in between? Absolutely. So here is our extra advice on structuring your RAID log. One by one. Actions. This is a must. You need to have this in the reviewed format as a minimum. Same goes for the issues. These, however, we would keep in the same table together with the actions. They can easily be logged in the same frame as they are similar enough. Then, decisions. When you think about it, a decision is a form of action. Hence, with some exceptions, I wouldn't recommend creating a separate sheet for decisions. More often than not, decisions can be logged as an action. They will be managed as effectively in the same table, as long as they are described well, capturing who needs to take the decision and by when. Dependencies. From a practical standpoint, the dependencies you need to document would mainly be external coming from other projects, other businesses, or regulatory matters. Most of the internal dependencies should already be considered and captured in your other project management documents, e.g. critical path analysis or Gantt chart. Furthermore, these events usually have a longer life and may need to be tracked for months, while the general actions and issues get logged, worked on, and closed within a couple of days or weeks. Hence, you can track these dependencies on a separate sheet within the same file. Finally, risks. We strongly recommend to keep the risks in a separate Excel sheet or even a separate file. This is also in line with the established project management best practice. Risk management is a big topic and quite specific, as we know, so it deserves special attention. Analyzing and documenting severity, probability of occurrence, and the possible mitigations and contingencies is key. Furthermore, risks also have a longer life than the daily and weekly actions and issues. A risk may remain open from the beginning of the project until its last day. These were our practical recommendations for structuring an effective RAID log. But before we close this topic, Let's refresh our knowledge of what a risk log should include by going through the steps in Excel 
and further strengthening our practical skills. See you in the next lesson.